Jim Caffrey of Pennsylvania sent us this crotch piece of oak. I'm not sure if it's live oak or white oak. It's not red oak, I can tell you that much. And we're going to turn it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! The piece is about 13 inches from here to here, 10 inches from here to here, about 10 and a half inches this way. It's about 4 inches thick. I'm going to turn it as a live edge. I'm going to go over to the drill press and drill a large flat spot for my chuck jaws to set against. I'm going to put a 5 16 inch hole for my 3 8 inch woodworm screw in the middle of that flat spot. Get it mounted up on the lathe and we'll get to turning. Well as is often the case with a crotch like this you have the bark that comes in here in the middle and that's what we have so it wouldn't hold a woodworm screw. So I installed this faceplate ring. I can only put three screws in there because this isn't going to hold anyway. And I have to admit those three screws went in there pretty easily. So I don't know how, how good of a grip we have but I'm willing to risk it because we're going to have uh, tailstock support. And of course that's going to be punky right there isn't it? Right where my live center is going to go. Let's see how bad it is. Well, it's, I guess it's okay. Although, now that I think about it, that's where the tenon is going to go. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Phil, maybe Phil didn't think this one through all the way. We'll find out as we go along, okay? I'll do the turning. You do the holding the breath. Let's see what kind of speed we can get. About 410 RPM. I'm going to be using a freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to wear a glove, mask, and face shield on. Well, I didn't talk about the bark. Sorry about that. I didn't talk about the bark. It's uh, not necessarily tight bark. Here and there it's tight. Here and there it's loose. I'm not going to try and keep it on, except that I'm going to start on this corner over here instead of the bottom and I'll work from the top side down. My chisel will come this way and that will prevent me from lifting the bark up. We'll see how that works. Well, my three screws are not holding. We'll see if that's going to work or not. The nose here is sinking in pretty good. The screws can't come out, they can only get loose. They're trapped uh, against the jaws of the chuck. I'm going to see if I can pick the speed up any. About 480. I'm just kind of trying to decide on a shape here. I think I'm going to round it up more than I thought I was going to.
Should be about there. Yep, fully round. Actually looks kind of cool. I know you can't see the top side, but it's rounded over the top as it is here on the side. It is punky. I can, I can get a smoother cut going from the bottom up. And now that I don't have that acute angle that I had, I might be able to do that. improved it any. Yeah, it did some. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. See, this looks okay. And it starts getting bad here. And this looks okay, kind of bad. But then we get over here, holy smokes. I don't know. Uh, that's just going to be the way it is. I'll, I'll sand it, of course, but it's just Punky. I could put some sanding sealer on there and try and harden it up, but you can see I'd have to take off another quarter inch just to get to the bottom of some of those holes. Okay, I'm going to come back down here to the bottom and see what we can do about that. I know, looks like Pac-Man, doesn't it? Doesn't do any good to wear a face shield if you don't put it down, you know. I guess that's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to paint the uh, sanding sealer all over this whole thing and then take some thin cuts and try and clean it up and see if, see if the punky parts will harden up. Now of course I haven't sanded or anything. I'm just trying to harden the fibers. So I'm just applying sanding sealer heavily. And I know I could paint it with some kind of plastic stuff or something. That's not me. If we have punky holes, then we have punky holes. That's just the wood. It's just the way it is. Wow, I thought I put a lot in this can, but it's gone. So I just wanted to give you an idea what I'm doing, and I will keep doing it for a while here. I'll get it to soak up as much as I possibly can, and then we'll start turning again. And that's when I'll bring you back. I put so much sanding sealer on here that I wanted to give it a chance to uh, cure. So I let it set overnight. It doesn't look any better. Looks pretty, pretty bad, uh, but it, uh, hopefully it'll cut better. So I've got a nice sharp 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to get my mask and face shield back on. We'll see if we can't clean up some of this. I think we're good. Time to put in that recess and that's got me a little bit worried. Well, of course I forgot. I can't do a recess because I can't remove my live center because my screws aren't holding the faceplate on there very well. So then I was going to do a tenon anyway, but I was going to do a small tenon, which is would be typical for this size bowl. But a small tenon falls all within this rotten wood. So it just wouldn't be strong at all. So I'm going to do a large tenon. I'm going to use my dividers to lay out that large tenon. And the way this is going to work is this 
this side of the dividers will make the mark. This side will tell me if I'm centered. If what's happening over here matches what's happening over here, I'll know I'm centered. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm only touching the left side, not the right side. And I'm just looking on the right side. And I can see I'm a little too inside. So I'm going to move out here a little bit. Now see they match. So that'll be the size of my tenon. That will get me into some solid wood in three places. It's going to be a little weak here, but if I don't clamp down really hard, I should be okay. So now I will cut that larger tenon. raise my tool rest up for the dividers. I forgot to lower it back down here. And some people uh, make their own tools to cut a recess with the tailstock in place. I'm not one of those people. I don't have one of those tools. But yes, you can cut a recess with the live center here. It's just that I'm not equipped to do that. Now I'm going to switch to this uh, diamond point tool so I can put a dovetail on the side of this tenon. I need to raise my tool rest back up again for that. That's good. Time for sanding. I'm going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit. I'll sand all of the bark in this opening here and then as far up along the top as I can. And then I'll change to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And I'll do a little bit more of that, but that gives you the idea. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. That looks like that'll be pretty easy. I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll put some probably sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Let's see what we got. This is a sanding sealer I'm applying. Shellac based sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. I don't get anything to tell you that. It's just that people ask and so I'm answering. And some folks might wonder why I didn't try a wood hardener or cactus juice. Well, I've never tried cactus juice, but wood hardener just changes the characteristics of the wood entirely. Just, it just makes the wood feel plasticky. You can't feel the grain. And it also changes how it reflects light. So I just I just don't use any of those things. If we have flaws, then we have flaws. They're, they're already there. Nature put them there, I didn't. And I think a lot of the problem people have with, with some of the work that I do, here I am, I'm sounding real defensive, aren't I? <laughs> But I think the problem they have is they think it's, you know, hey, it's a lathe. It turns perfectly round circles. And, Phil, you got something that's not a perfectly round circle, and my mind can't process that, and I don't like it. Well, that's okay. You don't have to like it. This is just what I like to do. But most of my regular viewers get it. I can tell that by the comments. And I sure appreciate that. Okay, and I'm going to have to brush all of this area 
and along the top and you're not going to be able to see that so so I'm going to put on uh, at least two coats of this sanding sealer probably three it looks like just to just to try and harden up some of this stuff then I'll put on two coats of shellac and I'll bring it back and we'll start working on the inside see you in a bit I've turned the piece around and have the tenon mounted up in the chuck. Now we have kind of an issue. If I hold my chisel here at the thinnest part of the bark and then rotate it around, look how wide the bark's going to be here and here. And that'll make for kind of a small bowl. So we may not be able to have continuous bark all the way around. I wish we could. Uh, I might have to come out here to make it look good. But I might not. So I'm just going to start in here and kind of sneak out this way until I get to about here. About a half an inch of bark. And just kind of see what it looks like. This, this will kind of throw a monkey wrench into the works as well. Because uh, the, the area around my tenon, you know, comes up into the bottom of the bowl. To where right here is only quarter inch thick. Just going by my fingers. I haven't measured it. So, I don't know. We'll, do, we'll just see how it goes. Going to be turning at 500 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Mask and face shield on. I could get some speed up. This stuff, this this rotten wood just doesn't cut nice at all. But the piece is so out of balance that I just can't get any speed going. So we just have to work around it. I don't really, oh my gosh, that's just awful. I don't really want to do an undercut because of our big gap here. I'll just cut right out of there. If I come way back in this way to follow the outside contour, well now we're losing a piece of bark. I'm going to stop for a minute and glue that back in there with some medium CA. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I got the bark fixed. I'm not sure it'll stay with us. I'm going to try carbide just because this cutting this is like cutting sawdust. I don't know what to tell you. It's just... It's just nasty. No fun to cut, so it's no fun to use these. We'll put the two no funds together, and maybe that'll be fun. I don't know. Gonna get my mask and face shield back on. We'll get at it. I don't expect this to be better, but who knows? I don't. Make sure I'm not going to go through the bottom here. Now we've got about an inch to go. Well, it's time to decide do we want to get rid of this and make a bigger bowl? I, I kind of think not. I know it's a lot of wasted space. I can't make it much bigger anyway. Are you with me? Keep it a small bowl, keep the bark on all the way around, or get rid of some of it. You're with me, aren't you? I thought you would. Good job. There's little glimpses of solid wood there, sort of solid. Yeah, just about time to quit too. We're about three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna go back to my gouge and see if it'll clean up any part of this. Well, it did. It 
did a little. I think there's going to be just enough solid wood to create a contrast with the not solid wood. I'm going to try shear scraping. Well, that helped. I don't know how it's going to finish up. Probably like this here. It's a... Uh, you know, it's, it's harder now that it has a finish on it. It looks punky because it is punky, but it doesn't give under pressure. So that's probably the same thing we're going to have in here. But, you know, you just work with what you got. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're done. Time for sanding. Well, you know, I think it's going to look okay. It's, like I said, it's going to look like this. And to me, that looks okay. That's just the way the wood is. I'm starting at 80 grit with my 2 inch disc. I'll work up through 400. I'll bring it back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I don't know what this is going to look like. Very little of the heartwood is going to show. I'll tell you that it's pretty, pretty dang smooth. It's textured, but it's still smooth. And of course I'm going to have to brush all of this. I just like to hit the high spots first. And it's going to soak it up like a sponge. But it sure did harden the outside, so it should harden this inside as well. I don't know how many coats of this I put on the outside. I just kept putting it on until it seemed like it wouldn't take any more. And that's what I'm going to have to do here as well. So this will be three day bowl, I think. I'll just keep putting it on today and at least one coat of shellac today. And then uh, whatever shellac tomorrow and give it a chance to set up and then we'll take the tenon off. And that's when I'll bring you back. So see you tomorrow. Well, this is one of the strangest looking bowls I've ever done. I can tell you that. I've got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to place the bowl over that and bring up the tailstock. I still have that massive center hole there for reference, so I'll just drive the live center into that. And that'll help center it on that block of wood. It's highly unlikely that I'll be able to finish this on the lathe. Because of all that punky wood, it's just not trustworthy at all. It's going to be a real pain in the neck, at least, to remove that tenon because it just wants to tear this wood. It doesn't want to cut it at all. Spin the piece up and see if it's centered. Turn the speed up to about 500. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. I'm going to turn the speed down just in case it disintegrates when I'm not looking. About 220. Yeah, that's as small as I'm going. Just, just can't do it. Cannot be trusted. So I'm just going to take this over here to the workbench, chisel that off, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. <laughs> I, I can't help I can't help it. When I look at this, I just laugh. It's just, it's an odd piece. It's just an odd piece. It's oak. It's, uh, what do you think?
What does it look like to you? Go ahead. Looks like a bedpan to me. <laughs> oh golly, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about it. There's the punkiest part of the top. Now it's hard now. It looks punky, but it's not punky anymore. And I I don't believe it'll get worse with time. I I, I believe it's turned. It's sealed. It won't get worse. The inside is punky as well, but it's smooth. You know, it's got texture to it. <laughs> I'm just looking at this piece in the monitor here and it looks funny to me. What do you think? You think it's funny looking? You know it is. There's the bottom. It's, uh, it's an odd one. It's just an odd one. <laughs> oh, golly. Tell me what you think. Thank you, Jim Caffrey, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, holy cow, you are totally cool. Thank you so much for that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one and be totally cool as well. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.